the Industry 101 Summer School Series. Here are some highlights in this episode. Great question and probably a thought that not a lot of our independent artists really have an answer to. And they start to relate more to what you're doing. Again, there's certain things that you have to do to make sure you really embrace all of media. So it gives people another perspective about you outside of just seeing a video of you with your face and hearing your music. They want to know who you are. They, you know, they want to know your business. But there still are people who, who rely on those, right? Welcome to the Industry 101. Class is beginning right now. Hey, thank you for joining us on the Industry 101, where if you've got questions, I'll get you answers. I'm your host, Robbie Jenkins, and when we come back, we're going to take some viewer questions that came in via email about broadening your audience and the importance of media in your career. We'll be right back. Provides young people opportunities to use their creative spirit to develop their individual artistic talents and to develop new works of art while participants work in a diverse ensemble setting. Hey, welcome back. Um, our first question comes to us from WG in Atlanta, Georgia. First of all, thank you WG for submitting your question and welcome to the Industry 101 family. Uh, so let's jump right into your question. The question was, what is the best route to take when trying to get your music to reach a broader audience? Great question, great question. And probably a thought that not a lot of our independent artists really have an answer to, but they have thought about it. So I'm just gonna touch on one thing that's really important. As much as it is to be uh, a visual person online, one of the things that we seem to miss, and we kind of skip over that part, is what you do offline. Because the bottom line is that as much as the industry has changed in terms of how we consume music and how it's distributed to us and made available for, for purchase, the key thing is that people still want to connect with you. And yes, they do connect with you through your music and through your art, but the other way they connect with you is being in the same space as you physically. This is why, since the beginning of the music industry, one of the key components to promoting music has always been shows. Performances, people don't perform as much as they used to. And I'm talking about a lot of indie artists. You, had to hit, you gotta hit that stage. You gotta hit the stage on a regular basis, as often as you can. Um, I, I think a lot of times people are just kind of put off by the fact that they're not hitting these broad audiences all the time. You don't have to. They don't have to be these big mega audiences. In fact, I did a promo tour for my first album that did great, great numbers for me. And what I did is I, I only booked small, intimate settings. The audiences weren't, I think the largest audience I had may have been 50 people. The whole concept behind that is that we're in a very intimate setting. It's up close and personal. They get a chance to hear me perform, see me sweat, they can almost hear me breathing without the microphone. They feel connected to you. They start listening more intently to what you're doing. And they start to relate more to what you're doing. Afterwards, took some pictures, signed some autographs, sold some merchandise, 
including hard copy CDs, which most people think are not relevant, they are. People still like them, still people want them as much as people download and stream. Why not service both people if you can? Especially at shows, people want to walk away with something. So give them something to walk away with. All right, so yeah, do, do some small intimate perform performances, smaller audiences, do a showcase, book yourself a showcase. The first concert I ever did with my band, I created the event myself. I'm not a genius, well, maybe I am, but it, it doesn't matter. You can do the same thing. Right? Also, there's local promoters. A lot of times they're booking these shows for a lot of major artists that are coming in the area and they need an opening act. Why not hook up with them, stay in contact with them, make sure that they get a chance to see you perform at some of those smaller venues so that they know what you're like. They, they get a copy of your music or send them an MP3 through the email, however you want to do it. Just make sure that they know who you are so that when an artist is coming through, you're the first person they think about when they're looking for somebody to open for. Right? Another thing that has nothing to do necessarily with performances directly, but kind of an indirect way, and that is, what are the things that you believe in? What are some of the causes that you, you would like to really stand up for? Maybe it's animal rights, maybe it's domestic violence, maybe it's uh, youth uh, organization, something, just something that you're passionate about. Uh, I don't care if it's you know collecting worms, but something that you believe in enough where you could reach out to local, regional, and national organizations and say, hey, look, this is something that I'm really passionate about and I would be interested in assisting your program by bringing this to the table. Maybe you might be able to become a local, regional, or national, or maybe even international spokesperson for that. Uh, whenever they're doing an event, maybe it's something that you automatically are, are considered to come in and perform. Maybe you've written a song especially dedicated to that cause. And this is something that also gives people another perspective about you outside of just seeing a video of you with your face and hearing your music. They want to know who you are. They, you know, they want to know your business. I mean, I'm not saying you tell them all your business, but tell them enough where they feel like they, they walked away with something and saying, I, I, I can relate to this person because I feel the same way or I think the same way. And a combination of all these things in some sort of order that works for you might be the thing that helps to broaden your audience. You know, you want them to be able to say, you know what, I thought I knew WG, but now after seeing this performance and hearing him talk about his songs in between songs, and and he looked right at me when he was when he was performing, uh, or she um, looked right at me when they were performing, I really feel connected to this artist now. This is somebody that I'm gonna go back and see what else they got. Uh, you know, what else do they have that, that you know, that I didn't know about? What other music do they have? And you just keep building that way and people start to really connect and they talk. They do talk. Here's another thing that a lot of people just kind of sleep on and that is the college market. The college market is a captive audience. Look, I was in college, I was on a campus, got stuck there. And after classes were done, you did your homework. And in my case, I was a music student, so I practiced. Um, what else was there to do? What, what's going on on the weekend? Well, the Student Activities Committee for most colleges start planning for the fall semester as early as August. So you might want to get some information out to a lot of these colleges or even some of these booking agents that book for a lot of these college events and say, hey, look, I'm available to perform. Consider booking me. And, and they will. They will do that. Right? So the, the, the whole thing about this captive audience thing is that not only do they like you, but when they go home, they tell their friends and relatives about you, or they call home and tell their friends and relatives about you. Yo, they, or they get on some sort of social media platform and they connect right away. Look, I just saw this dope artist, WG. You know, man, when he comes in the area, if you ever hear about him coming in the area, make sure you grab some tickets. And if it's close enough to the time that I'm coming home from school, grab me a ticket because I want to see him again. Right? That really does build up. Colleges also have radio stations. I'm just saying. Just a thought. So keep all those things in consideration that, you know, a smaller showcase is not a bad thing to do. Um, a smaller performance is not a bad thing to do. Intimate settings. 
um, possibly connecting with a local promoter that can get you an opening act slot and or adopting a cause that's near and dear to your heart that you really are genuinely passionate about so that you can go ahead and attach yourself to the organization in a way where they consider even having you as a spokesperson or a representative, you know, somebody that represents everything that they stand for. And then watch what happens. It just kind of snowballs after that. Um, those are some things I think you should consider WG. And any of you out there who are thinking about these things, this would be a good way to go, a great way to go. In addition to the stuff you're already doing online, just remember, you don't want to be just labeled, quote, what I call a cyber artist, unquote, where the only way people can connect with you is online. There should be other ways where they can do that. And, when you, and if you're doing these performances, have somebody you know, film it, videotape it or whatever so that they can post a live concert of you online so that that's another thing too. People see the actual show and they're not in the audience but they see how the audience is responding to you and how you connect with them. They can't wait for you to come to their area so they can jump in the audience and be a part of that next experience that you've created right in front of their eyes. Great, great thing. Great thing to do. So keep that in, in mind as an option as well. We'll be right back after these messages and we're gonna take another question from another viewer who wants to know about the level of importance for media in your artist's career. We'll, we'll touch that when we come back. Coming up next. Not a heavy social media audience does an engaged fan make. That makes sense. The bottom line is this that there's a difference between social media and e-commerce. Hey, we're back. And again, thank you, WG out of Atlanta, Georgia, for that wonderful question about broadening your audience. I hope that it helps you, and I hope that others who, who caught that segment, um, it helps them too. So our next question comes from ND in Stanford, Connecticut, who wants to know, do you think a strong media presence is necessary to be successful in today's music industry? Great question. You guys are really impressive with what you're asking. Um, I think that media has its place. And I think, um, again, there's certain things that you have to do to make sure you really embrace all of media. A lot of people put way too much emphasis on social media and they forget that there is still an audience for print media. There are still people who read magazines, periodicals, uh, they read newspapers, they still have subscriptions. Some of that is declining a bit, but there still are people who, who rely on those, right? Uh, you go into restaurants, you see these little free uh, periodicals and, and they're kind of regional and they talk about the different shows and concerts that are coming up in the area. People read those things. You know, you're in the restaurant and you're waiting for your food to come and you happen to see that. You pick it up, you read it, you see things, you, you hear about things. Let's talk about the social media aspect. I think that where most people kind of get um, caught up is they completely rely on social media to, to handle everything. You know, it's kind of like um, if I put it up there, it's just going to automatically bring me an audience. And that's not necessarily true. Um, there was a time in the industry where they really relied on major labels especially, really relied on your social media following as to have a deciding factor as to whether they were gonna sign you or not. Unfortunately, what they learned, some of those who followed that formula, what they learned is that not a heavy social media audience does an engaged fan make. 
that makes sense. So in other words, because you maxed out on a certain platform, let's say one platform you can max out at 5,000, there's others where you can go to 10,000 or a million if you want, right? But let's just say that you maxed out or you've gotten a substantial number of followers or friends or whatever it is that they call it per platform. The bottom line is this, that there's a difference between social media and e-commerce, right? Social media, if we're taking it offline, the way I would illustrate it and give you an analogy of it, it would be this. Let's say you wanna go talk to your friend at a coffee shop. So you're going in there to do what? Buy some coffee and talk, right? You're going there to socialize. You're not really sitting there thinking, you know what? I think I would like to buy some hoodies. You're not really thinking about that. Or while I'm sitting here, I think I might jump up and buy that CD. There's a stack of them sitting up there by the register. I think I will get one. You're not thinking about that. You went in there to drink some coffee and talk to your friend, right? So you're there to socialize. If you get up from there and say, you know what? My next stop is gonna be um, a store where they sell music. I'm gonna go in there and, and I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna buy it. You went in there, or let's say it's not even music. Let's say you went to buy some footwear, some athletic footwear. Um, you're going to the store to buy athletic footwear, or at least to check some out to see what you would buy if you had some money in your pocket and could afford to do it at that moment, right? You went in there with the intention of shopping. And so that's different. Two different places, two different places. Coffee shop, socializing, athletic, uh, Sportswear, e-commerce, buying, I'm, I'm making a purchase. So you may put a link to your website or to uh, the, the place that they're selling your music on social media, but let's, let's, be, let's be honest, and I'm gonna call some of you out. I'm just not gonna put your names up here, but you know who you are, I ain't lying. Somebody says, hey, you know, support me. Click this link and go buy my stuff. They get hit with the, yeah, man, that's fire. And then, you know, the flames. That's lit. <laughs> right? That's hot. Whatever, whatever you're going to say. Keep it up. You got this. Whatever. You, you, you put that up there, but you didn't click that link. You didn't because that wasn't your intention for today. You weren't going up there to make a purchase. If you were going to make a purchase, you would go directly to where that music is located, Amazon, whatever the, the, the platform is that you use to stream and download your music, and you would look for it and you would buy it, or you would stumble across it and you would buy it, or somebody would have given you some insight and said, hey, you know what? There's, there's this artist named ND, and you can find him here. I, I Look, I just downloaded this stuff. I, I listen to it all the time, right? So that that's the difference. And I think a lot of people get caught up in that social media hype and they are not really understanding why they're not getting the same numbers and the sales part. And that's because of engagement. When people are engaged and they're actively pursuing what you have to offer, then that's when you see the results that you're looking for. And a lot of that happens, again, going back to the answer, part of the answer of my first question is, what are you doing offline? Are you performing? Are you getting out there so that people feel connected to you? All right, so that's part of that broadening the audience. This question deals with the end results of doing that, right? Um, people will buy your stuff. If you go to any show, you see a sea of cell phones in the air. Everybody's um, shooting footage of the of the concert and some people right after they shoot a clip and they put it on one of their social media platforms where they want to share it they go right to where they, they start searching they're googling they're standing in the crowd and they you know they'll find you on social media they'll connect with you there they'll go to find where your music is is being sold and they'll download or stream something right there while they're standing there while you are on stage sweating in front of them they will do these things so I think that the, the key thing when you're talking about media is that you don't solely rely on any side of it, whether it's the online social media aspect or the offline. So that brings me to this. 
um, let's say you want to approach a magazine or there's a columnist in a local newspaper or a local magazine. Some cities have magazines just for their city or just for their, their market. That's cool, right? Um, what you do is you put together a press release, a one sheet of information that tells who, what, how, where, and when people can connect with you and why they should. Why, why is it important for us to know something about this person? Again, touch back on that first answer. It could be a cause that you're connected to. It could be a concert, a, a forum. It could be a rally that you're, you're gonna be performing it for uh, in connection to that cause that you're attached to. It could be any one of those things, right? But you send that out in, in advance notice. Usually you, you wanna give them at least, as soon as you know that you are going to be doing something, you wanna get something out to them as soon as possible. But they need at least uh, a couple of weeks notice to, and I'm saying a couple, I'm saying two to three weeks at least, you know, close to a month would even be better for them to check what you have, check your, your information. Maybe they're going online and looking for you, however they're gonna do it, so that they can see, okay, we're gonna make a decision as to whether we want to write about this. Like give them enough time so they have enough time to write it, submit it to their publishers, their editors rather, and then it gets out in time to really promote you. Uh, blogs are another thing that people just completely sleep on. Blogs, there's tons of blogs. You can even Google a list of the top blogs that are specific for your genre of music. You know, uh, and, and they will give you a list. Maybe you want the top 10, the top 20, the top 50, whatever it is you want. And they'll give you a list that tells you not only who they are, but their circulation, how many people actually uh, are or engage with these blogs and actually read them. You send them a press release, you send them links to your music, you send them video footage, whatever it is that you can do. Uh, you send whatever it is they require of you so that they can review all that material and decide how they're going to write about you. And these are all things that work in concert with each other, not one or the other. And I think a lot of times we just don't really see the balance or the importance of having that balance, uh, but it's definitely important. Um, so that's what I would say about media across the board. Um, and each specific area of media plays its own role. I think it's important for you to understand what those roles are so that you can best use them to push your career forward and take your time. This is not a, this is a, a, a marathon, it's not a race. Take your time, pace yourself, make things happen on a gradual basis, right? And then you'll see the end results. Right? Some, some people are going to be overnight successes. Some of those nights are like maybe five years long, <laughs> right? Some of them are five months long. Go figure, right? All right, so I hope that answers your question. We'll be right back. Do you know what the number one special feature is for Overture Entertainment Television? It's free. That's right. There's no monthly fee. You get episode notifications and premiere chats for every new series premiere. Go to the channel on YouTube, click here and here, and that's it. Welcome to Overture Entertainment Television. Oh yeah, please hit this button too, because sharing is caring. <laughs> yeah. I wrote on quite a few of these and some of those to get to some of these stages so I can do this and I collected quite a few of these in the process. Signed quite a few of these so that I can get in the booth to record quite a few of these. <sighs> the music business could be so cold. So I think I can help. If you have a question, submit it with your initials and where you're from via email. You got questions? I'll get you answers. Now we don't give legal advice. Do I look like a lawyer to you? But then what does a lawyer look like? Just drop us an email. The Industry 101. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. <laughs> yeah. Get ready to take notes because here's this week's assignment. Our first question was what is the best route to take when trying to get your music to reach a broader audience? 
I suggested booking a showcase. That's a great way to get some more exposure for your music and expand your audience. And while you're at it, make sure to connect with and invite a local concert promoter. A local concert promoter presents the best possibility of you opening for an established act that they may book in your area. I also suggested that you align yourself with a cause that you're passionate about. This will give your fans an opportunity to get to know you from a different perspective. Want to get on the college tour circuit? Make certain to reach out to the student activities director at any college campus and do it early. They start booking in August for their fall semester. Question two. Do you think that a strong media presence is necessary to be successful in today's music industry? Well, professionally, it has been my experience that all media is important. So make sure you do your research, compile a list of all those media outlets, and include them in your promotional plan. Keep in mind, an editor is more interested in a great press release than a nervous phone call. And when it comes to targeting your audience, blogs are the way to go. Be sure to reach out to the ones that are most supportive of the genre of music that you record because they'll be the ones most excited to write about it. And finally, one last tip, organization is the key to success. Good luck. Well, that brings us to a close. Hey, I want to thank WG from Atlanta, Georgia and ND from Stanford, Connecticut for your, your submissions. Your questions were excellent. Any of the rest of you now may have thought of some questions during watching this, uh, this episode, just please submit them to the email address at the bottom of the screen and we'll address them in a future broadcast. Uh, thank you Team 101 and thank all of you who have now joined the Industry 101 family. And so in closing I say, come on back and see us next time in class for the Industry 101. I'm your host Robbie Jenkins, signing off. See you next time.